back completely. Uh, we have uh, our brothers and sisters uh, in our virtual service, which can, t you know, we, it's, it's a new way of doing things, another transition. We're in church, but we're not in church. I'm not going to do anything with the pastoral candle until we can do this when we're all back in church. And that might be months, but nevertheless, that's when it will happen, and I'll, I'll, I'll prepare the pastoral candle as we would normally do at Easter, because it'll be such a celebration. Um, yeah, latest guidance is upgraded again that we need to wear masks in church. Uh, there were points where I will take this off, but then I've got to sanitise in between. I hope that people can hear uh, adequately. Um, sorry, I, I think I've only just put my microphone on. Yeah, is that is that on? Because it hasn't made a lot of difference to the sound. Uh, the the chat says Nina sort of needs to go up. Sorry. Right. Okay. Now it's on. Okay. The reason is the reason why we've got the. Uh, computer up there is because the speaker is important so that we can capture everybody's voices. Oh. Uh, so I uh, appreciate it a long way, but, but it covers everybody. Um, yeah, I was tempted at this thought, sort of, you know, I only popped out for a, a glass of milk, a bottle of milk or some type of story. But we all get together. Um, there are notices on the, on the stream as normal about a telephone number that we can ring during the week um, or pass on to people who would value that contact. Um, there is uh, the parish um, weekly newsletter, which will continue. The P&A will continue through email. Um, so I'm going to take this off now for the moment. Um, we'll continue with email. Um, but we will have some copies in church, so if, if you've been receiving it by hand, so that um, if it's not distributed by hand, that, that there's something for you. Um, uh, but that's going to kick in in a couple of weeks. The procedure at the moment has stayed the same. Um, we, we can now give online. Uh, Terry's just put in place uh, that we can give online, um, and that's on the parish website, the Nesson Parish Church. The website's on there. Um, and it's at the bottom of the page. It's at the bottom of the main page, at the bottom of St. Michael's page, at the bottom of St. Thomas's page. Uh, it is quite important that we have that in place now. Um, what else is on there? I can't see it, you see. So. Um, uh, yeah, Neston Parish's response still carries on through Neston Community Youth Centre. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, please, let's just relax as much as we can. Let's just go with the service um, as ever. It's a, it's a communion, but it's a spiritual communion. For those who don't want to receive communion, that's okay. Um, I'll ask you to stand at the point where you do receive communion, and I will bring communion to you. I will say the words beforehand so that when I'm in front of you, I don't need to say any words. I'll be masked. I'll have gloves on. Um, um, there will be a blessing afterwards. Again, I will do that when I return to the dais. So again, if you want to stand for a blessing at that point, then please do so. Um, if people at home may have food or, or drink, uh, they might want to consume at the point of communion. And in that sense, it is a spiritual communion of receiving and being mindful of receiving Christ into the core of who we are uh, to sustain us and strengthen us. Um, as we go about our, our daily lives. As I say, it's great to be back. Okay. There'll be no hymns, we're not going to be singing, but Daniel is going to play some music during the communion. So I begin with these words. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of our Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament on this very special day, let us call to mind and confess our sins as we say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. Forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We stand for the glory. As we say together, glory, glory to God and the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we gather in church, we have a special collect. Almighty God, we praise you for the many blessings you have given to those who worship you in this house of prayer. And we pray that all who seek you in this place may find you, and being filled with the Holy Spirit may become a living temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And the collect for the eighth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. from Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 to 5. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord says this, Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you have no money? Come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money 
for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I make him a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as you are able, Please stand for the Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus heard that Herod had beheaded John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That gospel is one we've known since we were little kids, isn't it? And even people who don't go to church know that story. It's just part of our heritage. Um, but I wonder what stands out for you when you hear it. such a lot of detail in there about that day by the lake. To start with, the whole thing started in pain. I think some of us, well, probably all of us now, can actually understand that. We've gone through some rather odd times, some difficult times, some painful times. For Jesus, it was a bereavement. He needed to get away, not just to take a break, but because John, his cousin, his colleague, had been cruelly killed. It's not a thing that gets, it's just so that part of the story sometimes gets forgotten. How would you have felt after hearing that news? He wanted to get some space, a bit like 
thinking, oh, I just need to pop into church. I know it'll be open. And then you get there and bam, the crowds of the big wedding, they're all celebrating. And that's not what you want. Or maybe you go and sit quietly looking across the way, or a party walker comes along with a pack lunch, you sit down next to you, chats away. Just need to get away. Jesus heard that news of John's death and slipped away by boat to an out of the way place where he could be alone, but unsuccessfully. Someone saw him, the word got round, and the villagers were walking round the lake till they found him. He saw them coming and was overcome with pity. And even though he was putting himself at risk, well, he would do, wouldn't he, what he just happened to John, he still chose to serve and to heal. He just needed to, he wanted to. He put people first. The ordinary folks would set out looking for something different, something that makes life really worthwhile. And what did they get? 5,000 fish sandwiches. It had been a long day, and Jesus' compassion was infectious. And those that were with Jesus wanted to show God's care too. It's evening, and they think, hmm, we're out in the country, it's getting late. And they say to him, shouldn't you send the crowds away from the nearby villages to buy some food? After all, they'd come for healing and teaching, not for dinner. And Jesus delights in that sort of thinking. If you want to help, why don't you give them some food? We can't. We've only got five loaves and two fish. As I said, Jesus didn't feed because he had to, because he wanted to. Or maybe he had to, because inside he couldn't do anything other. So he got them to sit down and get on with the job. Takes the five loaves, the two fish, the faces up to God and prays and blesses and breaks and gives the food to the disciples. And each of them then takes the food round to the congregation till they all have their fill. Twelve baskets of leftovers are gathered, thousands are fed including all the women and children. I sometimes wonder where those 12 baskets come from. If you come out of the day, where do they get 12 baskets from? Maybe there are extra food around, I don't know. But one person giving maybe just made others give. I don't know what it is, but God made it happen. Nothing is impossible for God. It's not a numbers game. Jesus gives generously. God gives generously. Even if it's only for one person. Perhaps there's things God's blessed you with this week or your family. It's not always a matter of God putting his hand in his pocket to hand out. He will sometimes bounce the problem back on other people. And they'd protest, wouldn't they? Wouldn't you? I can't do that. Or I'm too busy. Or the usual one these days, I'm too old. Fortunately, not everyone thinks like that. In March, someone in our deanery heard that the food bank there was closing and they knew that their food and their disadvantage needed that really well. And that really, they couldn't get down to Birkenhead, they had not got the money to get off Birkenhead to get food from there. They needed it locally. And soon the church had found funding and volunteers to provide those food parcels and far more. No one needs to go to bed hungry. And one of our local schools realised there was families struggling because their food vouchers hadn't come through. And children would normally be in school and have free school lunches, but if they weren't in school, they needed the extra bit of money to buy those lunches. Others had lost jobs or slipped through the net in another way. Or within days, that food was given. 
people heard about it, he got involved, and the first ground of campus was delivered. Like many schools, they were open from months on end. And they came up with an exciting way of supporting the staff and the pupils. Little surprises. And it's infectious. You do it, and somebody else says, oh, I'll send one into school. The school sends one out to somebody else. It just works that way. And it's happened around the parish, hasn't it? I've heard of cakes and scones. I live too far away to see cakes and scones. <laughs> but I know that other people have been delighted by that. It's made them feel their cared for, their love. Little chats, little phone calls. And again, others join in. We should never forget that God can do more than we can ever think or desire. Often our small ideas start off and they could become something bigger. This service itself, and the one we just had at St Michael's, a part of that, as soon as we got permission to open churches again, minister team started planning. The next day, I think it was, we got on with it anyway. And we could open one church, I think it was St Michael's, we could open it once a week, and we could serve 40 something people. And we got that all set up. Then we met about 10 days ago to say, actually, how's it going? Is it going to happen? Yes, it is. Two hours later, we've got the pattern we have now. So all you lot are here. And St. Michael's will have a service. Next week, St. Thomas's will have a service and there'll be another one here. Eight o'clockers will get a service. In a place where you feel comfortable praying with people that you know well. So it doesn't mean to say you can't go and join your group. But it also, because of what we learned, we are still able to welcome those who worship at home through the wonders of the internet. I found this story recently of a little boy calling at the house of a retired gentleman. And he offered picture postcards for sale, 10 p each, that must have been quite a while ago. And what are you going to do with the money, says the gentleman? I'm raising a million pounds for the earthquake, he said, solemnly. And the boy was so tiny, and the sum was so great that the man just had to laugh. A million pounds? Are you doing that all on your own? No, said the little boy. I've got another boy helping me. For a long time, I had a note on the wall just in front of my desk that said, pray be. And you know, when I saw it, I used to get really downhearted. Because I thought, I don't do big praying. And I realised actually I've probably got it the wrong way around. Most things start small. Of course it's important that we be touched with the wider vision, the plight of the refugees, <coughs> the effects of climate change, and bringing the love of Christ to the whole world. And it's right that we should and do get involved. And often there's local challenges that are limited, that are connected with that. And we can get involved in those. And ideas that we come up with often don't come to fruition, but it shouldn't stop us testing the waters. Often we blunder in with blue sky moments. And Jesus takes them. I was out with Alex yesterday for a walk. We had an expedition. We went off the riddle. I've, in, I've been twice. This is the third time I've been to Neston from Mel, where I live. And yesterday went all the way around the corner to Wales and went on a hill. And it was dreary and horrible. It's so lovely to be there. And as we were walking along, suddenly there was a blue sky moment, a little patch. A few minutes later it falls on the office. But later in the day, everything was blue, so the clouds moved. Whatever we offer, was it small or large, God takes it. It's probably not bread and fish. It could be your money. 
your sense of humor, your passions, or a skill with words or with tools, whatever we offer, whoever we are. It still remains our offering as it's taken and blessed and broken and given out. And sometimes a precious gift may seem unrecognizable from what we started with. But without that first willingness to get involved, to say yes, there'd be no gift at all. It's then that we have something to pass on. When Jesus saw those 5,000 people, he didn't send them away empty. He used what he had, what they had, in the best way possible. To show God's life of love and inclusion. Show what it could be like. He used what was in front of him. A small child offering a packed lunch. And anyone who knows small children, you know, they are quite spontaneous. You say you need something. They might be give you it. Give it to you. Don't they? Sometimes they learn from adults to hold on. Mine. They'll give you a smile or a virtual hug. And that will make someone happy. Are you ready to be used by Jesus? Whatever you offer, that's what you'll use to bring blessing and hope to other people. So let's not hold back. The last time we met as a ministry team face to face, somebody was, we were sorting out who was going to do the thing at the front of the monthly parish news. And I said, do you know, I find that really, really hard to do. Don't put me on for months. I really can't do it. And somebody else said, well, I can't do it either. And then my deep down moment was, you've got a little story to tell. Put it into your name. And the next week, I thought, oh, what about this? What about that? And for me, that's been an offering. Something I don't find easy. But all I could do was be me and write about me. You can be you and do what God asks you to do. That story has gone down in history of the 5,000 men being fed. One being fed, and they tell some more. And it's handed on through the generations. Centuries later, we're still being fed. Some will ignore God. Some will even ridicule what that story tells us. But it doesn't stop God continuing to bless. He delights in his children and wants the best for all of us. Each thought is offered in love. Each act, each prayer blesses others. And then grows into something bigger. Much bigger than we could achieve alone. It's like a mustard bush. That we heard about last week. I've bought some new children's prayer books and Bibles for the very tiny. And on the last page of the book, prayer book, it has this. God blesses, sorry, God bless all those that love me. God bless all those that I love. Then it goes on. God bless all those that love those that I love. God bless all those that love those that love me. And I think this gospel tells us that that keeps growing. God bless those who love those that love those that I love. God bless those that love those that love those that love me. And each work, each bit of love goes further on. That's what God wants to do, to take, to bless, to break, and then to share. So God bless each of us, wherever we are.
And so in response to the word of God, as we're able, we stand to affirm our faith in the words of the truth. As we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, and the Son, maker of heaven and earth, of all the things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Was in power of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he proclaimed to him in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge all baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. Lord, we thank you for always being there with us and for us, in joy and in pain. Draw us together as a close community of believers, hungry for more of you. As you strengthen us, teach us to care and to reach out to help feed those who are hungry in body, mind or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, we come to you with our concerns for all who suffer, from famine, poverty, or war, especially in Yemen and India, and anywhere else that's on our hearts. We pray for those whose lives are damaged by malnutrition and neglect. And we pray that the rich nations of the world won't waste or hoard resources, but find ways to share out what you have given us. And we ask you to support and inspire those who are responsible for making these decisions locally and at higher levels. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we thank you for all those who have fed and cared for us over the years. We remember the people who bless us, bless us with compassion and gentleness. Bless our loved ones, our homes and our communities. Help us to long for you for your presence and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And we pray for all who feel drained and empty. For our health workers, teachers, and all who go beyond the call of duty to care for others and to keep them safe. Lord, have compassion on any who are struggling at the moment. Renew their spirits, refresh their bodies, and give them hope. 
the weak, the weary, the harried. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On the first Sunday in the month, we pray for all those on our healing list. We pray for Gloria Dodd, for Leslie from London, for Michael North, Stuart and Nick. For Norman Hozak, Helen Free, Pauline Atkinson, Lynn Brown, James Hedrick, Sue McLeod, for Jamie Lee Willard, Keith Bloomfield, and Sheila Sutton, George Probert, Jeffrey Walsh, Elaine Keane, Paul McAmey, Len Sloan, Baby Orphan Hope Foster, Bob Rowden, Christine Anderson, and Rebecca Mahoney. As we pray for them, we also pray for ourselves. Spirit of the Living God, Present with us now. Enter you and them, body, mind, and spirit, and heal you of all that harms you. Amen. And we thank God for the lives of those who died recently, particularly Lionel Shaw Thompson, Colin Tudor, and Michael Derrick Williams, and those who died from coronavirus. We pray for their families and friends at these difficult times. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You might want to just acknowledge to those around you the peace, but please just from distance as we acknowledge peace between our virtual uh, congregation and ourselves. Peace with you. Please be seated. So we come to the preparation of the table.
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we take. The Lord is here. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give and thank. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks. And said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We say the Lord's Prayer together in the form that is most comfortable for you. I will lead us in the modern version. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
یعنی Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you.
For those who would want a blessing, may I bless you. May you know Jesus Christ as your friend. May you know of his love for you. And may you know his guidance each step of the way. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your word be deaf to clamour and dispute. May the tongues which have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of your life. Glo glory to you forever. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, God, we, we thank, thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. And so we come to the blessing, which is a blessing for us all. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
still watching, God bless. Take care. Have a lovely week. Alan? Yeah? Well done.